For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. Sabina, let, let's come to you um, because you've, um, I know, interacted with this argument before and you're sceptical from the very outset that there really is such a thing as the fine tuning of the universe. So, so tell us where you begin with all of this. Uh, well, it, it starts with uh, what Luke said at the very beginning, that these types of fine tuning arguments are similar to the types of fine tuning that we observe in everyday life. They're just not. Uh, so the typical example that people like to bring up for fine tuning is a pencil uh, balanced on its tip. Um, so we wouldn't normally observe that in everyday life. It's a highly unstable situation. Um, if we saw something like that, we would expect an explanation. You know, there's something holding that pen in position, uh, whatever. So, so the point is that we come to this conclusion. It's unlikely it requires an explanation, right? Um, but how do we know that? Well, we know that th there are other positions that a pencil can be in that are much more likely. Uh, and the reason um, we say it's much more likely is because we have observed it many times. So we have observational evidence. Now, when we're talking about the values of the constants in um, the concordance model or the standard model of particle physics or whatever it is, like these examples that Luke was just talking about, we can't change these constants. They have one value for we currently know, you know, that there, there are variations of these models where people consider that the constants may actually vary with space and time, but that's a different story entirely. So for the models that Luke would, was just talking about, they, they are constants, as the name says, and we can't change them. There's no physical process that will change these constants. Now, one can make a purely theoretical observation um, of the type that Luke was talking about, you know, as a hypothetical question. You can say, well, what would a universe look like if I were to change this constant this way or some other way? And lots of people have done that and there have been books written about it. And, and, and that's all fine with me. Um, but it's, it's not a scientific claim to say there's something in need of an explanation here because these are not examples that we can ever observe. Um, so we don't know anything about the probability of that ever happening. Okay, so so essentially, you're just not convinced that we could know that these constants and values could take a different value. And therefore, we don't know what the probability is of them taking a different value. Therefore, all we have is the one example we do have in our universe of the values they do take, which do happen to support life in the universe. Um, I know that you're very critical, not just of those who use fine tuning as an argument for God, but even for a multiverse, which which is a relatively popular, as I see it, uh, principle in physics. A lot of people seem to be, you know, engaging with that idea. But 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 you're quite critical of that, aren't you? Well, the multiverse is not a principle. Uh, it's a hypothesis uh, and it's not a scientific hypothesis. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more complicated. The, the fine tuning argument is not the only argument that people bring up in favor of the multiverse, but it, it's certainly one of them. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of similar. So, so people are saying, well, we do observe these constants of nature. Uh, that's arguably correct. <laughs> uh, and then they say, well, we want to have an explanation for that. Like, why do the values have the values that they have? And that's fine with me. You know, that's what science is all about. You want, you want an explanation. Then they say, well, the, the multiverse is this explanation. And that's there where my problem begins because it doesn't explain anything in the, in the scientific sense. It doesn't explain anything. And, um, why do they think it explains something is because they've constructed a problem, which is unscientific to begin with, which, which is this, uh, fine tuning argument. There's just, as you, as you summarize it correctly, um, we, we can't change these constants. Therefore, we don't know anything about the probability of that ever happening. So there's nothing in need of an explanation. Okay, I, I think this will be a key difference between you here then, Luke. Um, what's, what's your response to this idea that, well, we don't know that they could take a different value, therefore we just can't assign any probability to, to their being unusual in that sense? Yeah, so the, the idea that the only way that you get probabilities or that you can know probabilities is by observing um, a large number of things, you know, data, that, that's an interpretation of probabilities known as frequentism, which is uh, Sabina's outline in one of her videos. And it's, it's not, 
I don't think it's an interpretation of probability that a lot of scientists subscribe to. The alternative is something called, well, there's a number of alternatives, uh, but one of them is called Bayesianism. And I did a quick check on the NASA publication database. There are currently over 11,000 papers with the word Bayesian in the title. Um, there are 79 papers with the word frequentist in the title or frequentism, and half of those also have the word Bayesian in the title. So um, the whole point of trying to, you know, let me try and lay out what this, this word means. Um, for a Bayesian, you can interpret probabilities to mean d degrees of support. The idea that one statement supports another statement. So there are dark clouds overhead, supports the statement that it will be raining 10 minutes from now. Um, now, you can also support that with data, of course, but it's not that that statement is a, you know, that's a statement is not a statement about the data we've already observed. It's a statement about how, how different um, you know, propositions support each other. And once you've done that, I mean, the fact that you can't run the fine-tuning argument on frequentism is... Uh, yeah, of course. Like every <laughs> every paper on the fine tuning argument, start you know mentions that at some point. It, it's all run via what are called via these sort of Bayesian or epistemic probabilities, and they are widely used in physics. So there's a a major um, statement there that needs to be supported. I mean, the, there's there's discussions of Bayesianism in, uh, that that Sabine has brought up in 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 her various publications. But all I'd, I'd want to say is that to say that we can't observe other values of the constants, therefore there's no sense in talking about their probability, it, uh, assumes an interpretation of probability that is not shared, that at, at the very least uh, there's a vast, vast number of scientists, of physicists, of statisticians who, who wouldn't sign up to that. It's called finite frequentism. And, and I, th I think it's a complete non-starter. Sabina. Well, yes, of course, I'm aware that there are different ways of interpreting inter interpreting uh, probabilities. Um, I actually, when I made this argument, I uh, did not say that um, we need to have, uh, the only way to speak about the probabilities is to have observational evidence uh, of <clears throat> these other values. There are certainly other ways that you can go about it, but in the end, they all go back to evidence. Like if I think of this balanced pencil again, uh, you don't necessarily need to sample uh, a lot of instances of pencils in, in one or the other orientation. You can also just use a physical theory about what you've learned about, you know, the air or the surface that it's standing on and the kind of vibrations, distortions, um, uh, that can occur, and you would you would again come to the conclusion that it's 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 very unlikely to observe a pencil balance on its tip, and you can interpret this uh, in a Bayesian way. It's like it's not the expectation uh, you would have on that observation. But again, that's an argument you can't make for the constants of nature. There there are no physical processes that could change these constants of nature because they're constant. And if you go by the expectation that we have uh, from the observations that we have made, your expectation is, of course, the next time you measure, you know, alpha, it will have the same value that it had before. Uh, so, again, I, I don't know what, what you're talking about. 